<laughs> Look, beautiful people. It's a it's a beautiful day. Amazing day, as we were talking about earlier, right? And we appreciate y'all for tuning in to another amazing and impactful episode of the True Health Forever podcast, where we try to live our best life eh, 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 through the lens of holistic health. I'm your host, Devon Travell, creator of Black Wall Street, the board game. And it is my honor to introduce you to the beautiful, the smiling, the curlific choreography health coach her. Self, my bride, talk to him. <laughs> what is up, everybody? My name is Sinclair, aka the, the Health Nerd, and here joining you on a Monday. Mm-hmm. This is the first. This is the first for us on a Monday morning, all turned around. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's a beautiful day. Glad to be here, um, and especially with our special guest. Oh yes, ma'am. Uh, before we get into it, hit on with the did you know for the day? So. Did you know that upwards of 75% of the population is lactose intolerant, which (laughs) look (laughs) approved, which basically means that we do not have the enzyme that allows us to digest uh, lactose, which is a sugar. Um, So, you know, uh, many of us have probably experienced this, right? You get a big bowl of ice cream or whatever, and then afterwards you quickly regret it, right? (laughs) Whether it's gas or bloating, and we may think that this is just uh, our body, right? right, right, Just quote unquote normal. Um, But, you know, after doing that so much, right, on a daily basis, we actually start to cause a lot of damage inside, a lot of metabolic dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Um, And this can lead to some symptoms that we may not even trace back to our dairy consumption, right? This can be weight gain, this can be acne, this can be hormone hormonal imbalance, right? And the list goes on. Things that, again, we may not contribute back to dairy, but you'll never really know unless you experiment a little bit with your diet and maybe right. pull some of that out, maybe limit that for, you know, for a little bit. So there's so many good alternatives out there, which is great. But, you know, I challenge you to maybe, maybe 2022, maybe try it for a little bit, experiment with your diet and see how it goes for you. There it is. That is the did you know for the day. And I loved how you tie that in because our guest today, right, talks about some of the seven foods that you should eliminate out of your diet. And lactose, right, is definitely one of those. We have a four time New York bestseller, triple certified health person in the building and a warrior mom herself. We are about to introduce y'all to the legendary JJ version. Queen, are you ready? Are you ready for some podcast? All right, we're out. and groove it in there she is miss jj how are you doing today oh i'm sitting over here jealous of sinclair's voice that's what's going on that's already like holy smokes (laughs) (laughs) thank you oh no there's no stopping her oh no absolutely oh no (laughs) trouble now oh i know i am okay thank you (laughs) Mm -hmm. oh let let's get into it right so your your new book warrior mom right, is really focusing in on the seven secrets to bold and brave resilience and how bombs can really uplift their superpower, right? So can you tell us a little bit about your superhero origin story? And we were watching Avengers yesterday, right? So heroes are our our top of mind right now, but literally we are sitting here with a real life Shiro someone who saves lives and has saved her son's life. So can you talk a little bit about your your origin story that led you down this path? Well, here's what's interesting about that book. Uh, that book was not originally titled Warrior Mom. And I couldn't figure out what to title it. And it was going to be published. So they're like, you just get a title already, right? And about six months into it being published, I was doing an interview. And they said, you know, we had to have you on here um, you're a warrior mom. And I'm like, there's the title. So you can retitle <laughs> books if you want to, just so you know, because the minute you say that every parent gets it. And, uh, you know, I, I think anyone who's a parent 
will understand this story. And I hear people say, I could never do that. However, I believe you never know what you're capable of until you're called and that we're really never better than when we're challenged. Uh -huh. And I get this story. I, early on, I was watching this movie. It's really old movie called Seventh Sign. Have you heard of this movie? Seventh Sign. Yeah, no. So it's really old. It was a movie by Demi Moore. And um, basically she had to show before she could have a child, she'd miscarried the first time. And it was like the sign from God that if she was willing to die for her child, she could have it. Mm. And I remember like, you know, as I got, when I was pregnant the first time walking down the street, just thinking, you know, I will do whatever it takes to protect my kids. And I think any parent, it's, it's warrior mom, because I'm a mom, but it could be warrior dad, right? It could probably be warrior aunt or warrior uncle as well. So I have uh, two boys and when they were 15 and 16, and it was, it was literally when my first big book, The Virgin Diet was coming out, like six weeks before this book was coming out, uh, getting launched, my son was crossing the street at dusk and got hit. And literally all we know is that the car appeared to be going like 40 miles an hour and the woman stopped the car, got out of the car, looked back, gasped and drove off. That's all That's all anybody knows. Another neighbor pulled up and protected him from oncoming traffic and called 911. We didn't even know this was happening. The only reason we discovered it was my um, ex-husband and other son were driving by this accident scene, saw all of this, knew Grant had gone out walking, asked the policeman what had happened. And the policeman said, a boy got hit and he looked just like him because my kids are a year apart. They look like twins. And so we all raced to the hospital. They won't give us any information. We, all we'd known is that he was airlifted. And you know that people do not get airlifted if their leg is broken. We right. get in there and we get ushered to a conference room. So now it's, it's really looking bleak. And the doctor proceeds to tell us that my son has a torn aorta and he is going to die sometime in the next 24 hours that it's it, every hour his the chance it's going to rupture increases by 10 percent then he says um you know we can't fix that here because he's got multiple brain bleeds he's in a deep coma and we'd have to use a blood thinner it's a very specialized surgery we'd have to fly him to the next hospital in la but he'll never survive the airlift and even if he were to survive the airlift he'd never survive the surgery and even if he were to survive the surgery, I mean, I cannot make this up, right? Even if he were to survive the surgery, he says this, and any parent listening, this will upset you, says he will be so brain damaged, it wouldn't be worth it. Now, my 15-year-old yeah. son's looking. Now, here's, here's why you got to teach your kids to respect authority, but question authority, right? And to get second opinions. And the fortunate thing is my family is we, we, most of my friends are doctors, my ex-husband's whole family are doctors. So we didn't have the doctor on the pedestal thinking this is the only opinion, you know, he is God. We listened to this. My son Bryce looks at the doctor and says, well, it sounds like maybe there's a 0.25% chance he'd make it. And the doctor says, yeah, that sounds about right. And he goes, well, we'll take those odds. That's not zero. Right. And uh, so and <clears throat> the bigger real thing that happened is that at that point, I kind of took a break, walked outside. I've always been super connected from the moment. I remember the moment uh, I, I was pregnant with Grant, literally the next morning I get up, I tell my husband, I say, um, we're having a baby. It's a boy. And he's like, you're crazy. Yeah. Nope. Sure enough. I mean, I always knew I always could feel him. And so I walk outside and I said, Grant, what do you want me to do? Because, you know, you're in a situation where you don't know what you, what's going to happen. You might have someone who's in a coma for the rest of their life, who's a vegetable. And I go, what do you want me to do? And I heard so clearly fight for me. And so that's what I did. I walked back in. We overruled that doctor. We had him airlifted to the next hospital. We went to a place called um, Harbor UCLA. It's the number two trauma center in the country. And the doctor there was amazing. Like we walked in and the guy's like, I got this. <laughs> I do this all the time. I've had people thrown off the overpasses. I fix them up. You don't even need to worry about it. And meanwhile, what I didn't know about this doctor is throughout the night, 
because this had happened in the evening. And between 2 a.m. and 6 a.m., this man recruited five other surgical teams. He recruited a stint that was no longer, it was part of a study, wasn't even available anymore, but he knew it was the right one. It was also only available for adults. He said, I figured I'd ask for forgiveness. This is the guy that you want on your team, right? <laughs> so he did the surgery. He, he's like, listen, you go. He showed me where the waiting room is. You go hang out there. I'll be back and tell you everything was fine. And my ex-husband, John, and I were like, okay, that sounds good to us. We went up there. We hung out. We, he comes up. He goes, all right, it's all good. He's all fixed. Don't need to worry about his aorta anymore. He goes, now, I don't know if he'll ever wake up. Uh, I'm just the plumber. You know, so you're like, hi, low, right? right. And uh, we go to the neurosurgeons who are like doom and gloom. We don't know, blah, blah, blah. And I went into the hospital where, you know, into the room where he was. And he was in, on the ICU ward at, over at Harbor UCLA. And he's in the corner and there's sun coming through. And he's on, he's on all these machines. He's on a ventilator um, and they're managing his blood pressure. So there's all this beeping and alarms going off. And I could literally only hold one finger. He'd had 13 fractures. He's got road rash. He's got, you know, all these bandages. So I got this finger and I said, Grant, you know, we're here. We love you so much. And the nurse is like, he, you know, he's in a coma, like he's can't respond. And, and then I say, said, and your brother Bryce loves you. And I feel the faintest little squeeze. Mm. And I'm like, mm. and then I think I am delirious, right? Like, you know, <laughs> clearly I'm crazy. And then I said, your grandma loves you so much. Nothing. And I said, your girlfriend Mackenzie misses you and loves you. And he tried to, like, I could feel him trying to pick my fingers off the bed. And, and you know, like, that's when I just looked at him. I went, Grant, it turns out, how crazy is this? His name means warrior. So I go, Grant, you're a warrior. You just need to fight. I will get all the resources and you're going to be 110%. And it, that is just what I focused on from that minute on. And there was no indication, by the way, you guys, that, that he was going to be alive the next day, much less 110%, right? They didn't know if he'd wake up. They didn't know if when he woke up, if he'd be able to move, if he'd hear, if he'd see, nothing. I mean, he literally had been basically dead on the pavement and his both of his femurs broken in half. I mean, he had cast everything. But I just took that mantra on and, and you know, four and a half months in the hospital. It's It took about eight years to bring him to the point where I could say, yes, he's 110%. He's better than before the accident. But the bigger thing with that is he's not just the only one who's 110%. The entire family is 110% because when you go through something like this and, and think about it, I don't know about, I can't recall any day in my life where everything went perfect. Maybe someone sent me flowers or a pair of Jimmy Choo shoes and, you know, and I went, gosh, I grew so much today. Like I become a better person The you, you become a better person. You become more resilient. You when when you are tested, right. When you are challenged and at the time you're not going, Oh boy, I'm going to become a better person. Like that did not once run through my mind oh, lucky me. But um, you know, as I went through it and just held on to that 110% belief and leaned into getting help and community, like you look back and it's very hard to freak me out or scare me at this point now. That's powerful, right? The huge origin story. And I want to talk about that moment. I think that was the pitiful moment when you walked outside of the hospital and somehow you, you heard Grant's voice, right? You heard that, that warrior voice inside of you that said, fight for me how do you teach or how do you practice being able to listen to the inner voice whether it's your inner voice whether it's the voice of the universe the voice of your your kids how do you like find that peaceful warrior pose look at that <laughs> i do yoga from time to time me too <laughs> <laughs> okay so you know here's what's interesting i had a mentor at the age of 30 who told me all of these things that when I wrote Warrior Mom, people kept asking, where did you learn how to do this? And I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. And all of a sudden, a year after that, I went, oh my gosh, it was all Kay Smith and her mindset training. It was a woman who I thought was going to teach me how to have a successful business. Uh, by the way, business, relationships, you know, they all start with having a, having the right mindset. And one of the things she taught me then was, and I remember she would have these statements and you'd go, 
Oh, that's too simple. Her statement was listen, truly listen. Now for a while, that for me meant putting up a big sign on my, you know, in front of my phone, in my car that said, shut up and listen, because I thought it just meant I was talking too much. But there's another level of listening. I mean, there's the first obvious, like, can you really just listen to the person in front of you and really give them space and hear them because people just want to be heard. But then there's the bigger part of, you know, can you hear whether it's, you know, that higher power, whether it's what's the deepest journey in your soul. And for that, you need that space. And I get so concerned nowadays because like there, people just don't have space anymore. They're always thumbing through their phone and listening to something. And so this year I have made it like my commitment that I was going to become a meditator and I have failed, failed, failed in the past. I failed at yoga and meditation. So this is with the year that I've done yoga and meditation. And um, it has been quite, quite a shift for me. And I, I mean, I, when I decide I'm going to do something, I'm like all in, right. I, I they say, if you want to take the Island, you got to burn all the boats. I like the boats were singed, they're ash. Um, but I went to these Dr. Joe Dispenza week long retreats. In fact, I've got another one scheduled in another couple of weeks. Cause I knew that I needed accountability and community and, and then the right method that would work for me. So that is what I've been up to and a really hard yoga teacher, man. Wow. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to the True Health Forever podcast. We hope you learned something valuable that you can take and implement into your life. Now, we've all heard that sharing is caring, and this podcast is no exception. If you enjoyed this episode, please, please share it with a friend, a family member, a coworker, a stranger walking down the street, anybody who you think can level up from this message. As always, we appreciate your support, and we'll talk to you next week. Be well.